Alright, I'm back with a retro review. Well, I don't think this product is that old. I mean, it came out in like 2015 or something, but man, spoiler alert. I wish that this thing is as old as it sounds, as its sound makes it out to be. This is the Alacom EHP CH 3000 SPK. Ugh, what a mouthful. Alacom is not really that well known, but they make a variety of tech products, which I guess includes IMs as well. And uh, that's where we have this thing. With its uh, high res certification, which by this point you should know means nothing. And its product is the proof of that. Uh, well, let's get jump right into this review of the Alacom EHP CH3000 SBK. Ugh. Okay, so you've got a pretty standard style box. You know, that's the render in the front. Uh, compatibility info on the side. Features and accessories on the other. And in the back there's like a bunch of like technical specs and a bit of marketing I guess. Uh, don't worry about the excessive tape everywhere. That's just like a bunch of uh, store stickers. When I bought this thing it's just ugly. Don't worry about it. But there is one sticker. But I want you to notice it's this new sticker. Yeah, because this product is, is totally new. Just came out yesterday. Said no one. Uh, and yeah, the, the box looks this beat up when I picked it up from the store. So what can you do? So sliding out the sleeve, you get a black inner box with an opening flap actually. And revealing the Alicom IEMs in their cutout. Oh yeah, they really like to advertise their uh, sound advancing technology on here. Cool, I guess. Below that, you have the usual assortment of uh, generic red cord silicone tips. Interestingly, uh, they do have an opaque black color as opposed to the usual uh, smoky and semi-transparent gray of the other batches I have. A little interesting, I guess. And then you have this uh, carrying pouch. It's got a yellow Elecom tag, which uh, gives a nice accent. Feels mm, fabric-y to the touch, but it's a little rough, unlike the pouch from the Moondrop Corks. Another thing is that it, as you, I, I, I hope you can see it on camera, but it catches dust and lint like nothing else. This material gets dusty real quick, so uh, not great. Oh, and uh, you've got a mechanism up top. So you pop it out, you put the IMs in, and it closes shut, keeping the dust out, hopefully. Uh, so that's pretty cool. You also get this uh, shirt clip slash cable organizer thingy. It looks weird, I don't exactly know how it works, and like, if you look at the places to like uh, loop this cable, I feel like it'll strain the cable when you do it, so uh, don't bother. Surprisingly, you don't get an instruction manual in here. That or I might have lost it somewhere, <laughs> sorry. Well, if there's any praise I can heap onto this IEM, it's that everything seems uh, solidly built and the design is actually pretty cool. It kind of has this uh, like steampunk industrial vibe whilst also looking not too old school actually. And I especially love the look of the uh, strain relief here with the ribbing and the metallic sheen. It all looks, you know, very stylish and um, unique. I guess. But the praise kind of ends here because uh, here comes the catch. This black part, you see? It actually had a soft rubber coating applied to it. And uh, well, 
the moment I opened up these IMs, rubbery version started its course and just mucked up my fingers with black goo and like it turned these IMs ugly and sticky real fast. So I had to send these in for the store to remove the rubber coating. Uh, so now it looks fine, you know, your eyes have been spared from the worst of it, but um, yuck, nonetheless. Please, I am manufacturers, do not use soft touch coatings. It will become sticky over the years. Also, I don't see any like front venting. Uh, I only see a, I think a back vent here. So this thing will exhibit driver flex and create a suction effect in your ears, making it a little uncomfortable. Oh, and the uh, wearing experience, it's standard. You just stick them into your ears as usual. It's light and mostly non-intrusive. The cable here has a uh, similar type of uh, sheathing to actually a lot of Sony's IMs at the time, if you can see that. It's got a ribbed rubber texture, but instead of being flat, this cable is actually rounded. It's overall a serviceable cable, although the microphonics are kind of bad. If you can see here, this jack is also very reminiscent of the Sony designs, actually. Similar strain relief, similar type of, uh, I guess, construction. And uh, there's also this microphone clump, which is another oddity from Japan. You've got the main play pause button as usual, right? But the volume uh, adjustment is a like a slider with a resistor thing inside. So instead of just volume up and down buttons, you actually get smooth volume transitions. But uh, it's kind of fiddly compared to just volume buttons, so eh. Cool, but kind of worthless. The microphone on the Elecom EHP CH3000 SBK is also alright. It's on par with most in-ear headset type microphones, a little muffled, but it'll get the job done for a call or two. Okay, so for source matching, yeah, both the LG V20 and the DX150 sound about the same here. No worries there. And as for ear tips, uh, you could consider getting some spin fits to try and increase the comfort, but I'll just be sticking with the uh, standard stock red cord tips. They do fine, and uh, tip rolling doesn't really benefit the sound of these Elecom IMs much at all. And you know, with all that out of the way, let's get into the sound of the Elecom EHP CH3000 SBK. So, for the sound, these Elecoms have a very colored sound signature. Imagine a very heavy V shape. That's the sound of these. The, the tuning here reminds me of like the horrible mixing and mastering of like old 2008 era pop songs, if you know what I mean. So, starting with the bass. It's a very aggressively tuned bass here. And I'll give credit where credit is due. You do get good impact and a bit of rumble out of this IM with a semi-soft bass texture. But yeah, that, that's like where my praise ends. Here comes the criticism. Bass detail is almost one note. And there is significant mid-bass bleed into the mid-range. I almost thought that I got a defective unit at first, but further testing with other units at the store proved that nope, this is just how it sounds. This kind of heavy handed tuning is why Critical and many others shy away from it bass. Because when it's not done tastefully, like in this I am, it's it's just awful to listen to. And then for the mids, right? The mids of these Elecoms are severely depressing and recessed. Not only do they get violated by the domineering mid bass, they're also severely backwards in the stage and they don't have much detail either. 
The tonality and timbre is also a little tilted, making vocals sound a little thin and perhaps nasally, combined with the other glaring faults making the mid-range of these just really bad. And then for the treble, the treble of these elecoms is just really rough, unrefined, and shrill. You have overly hot regions, clearing, and sibilance. I, I guess they were compensating for the mids and a strong bass, but man, th th this is not the way to do it. Quite frankly, the less I have to say about the highs, the better. I guess after all that said, the soundstage isn't half bad. It's above average in width, but don't expect any height here. And the heavy tuning can also create a lot of congestion at times. Detail retrieval and resolution on these elecoms is also disappointing. It barely competes with like the, the $10, $15 chi-fi stuff that I've covered nowadays like the Moondrop Corks for example. The recreation of musical textures is also very weak. Macro details and separation is maybe above average, but the nuances in music are mostly lost. Again, this heavy V-shaped tuning just doesn't help. The technical ability of this thing has been far surpassed by even basic offerings nowadays. Okay, so between these Elecoms and the Aglamor F300 Lite that I covered before, for the build, I would say that the All Glamour has a slight edge given that it doesn't start like oozing black rubber goop on me and a slightly better cable. But otherwise the Elecom holds up quite well in terms of uh, the look and feel. Now for the sound, the All Glamour is a lesson in what to do versus the Elecom which is what not to do when creating a fun and energetic sound. The F300 Lite keeps a powerful bass, even with a mid-bass boost, though with much less bleed and much more general gracefulness. The mids are thickened up, and instead of an overcompensating treble, it opts to stay out of the way, even if at times it is a little muffled or dull. The pathetic technical ability of the Elecom makes even the F300 Lite sound like it's light years ahead. No contest here. If you want something with a fun sound for electronic genres and even heavier stuff, then the All Glamour F300 Lite is your friend. Stay far away from these Elecoms. So, whereas some old releases bring you a sense of nostalgia and remind you of the golden days, the olden days, the Elecom EHP CH 3000 SBK, I hate that name, is a painful reminder that the portable audio scene used to be so bad that you can't even believe it was able to exist like this. Without the competition of Chi Fi, brands like Elecom were either misguided or they just did whatever. And I present to you whatever this was. Like, I, I, I think that most people know that the high res sticker on the package doesn't mean much nowadays, but it's products like these that reduce its credibility even more. At the time that this was released, it went from anywhere between 60 and 80 bucks. Oh, it is unacceptable at that price to be honest. I paid 25 bucks for this and I still feel ripped off. This one was just so bad. Actually, actually no. It's so bad that I have decided it's going to be the first in something new. I present to you the first member of Lumerion's Hall of Shame. This will be where some of the worst products I have reviewed come to reside. Please feel free to check out my website to see it displayed and hopefully where it will be contained. 
it takes a special kind of rotten audio gear to be on here. And I think this Elecom IEM deserves it. All right, we've reached the end of yet another review. Uh, of course, I did said before, you know, check out the website for that. Uh, I also have a links to like the music I used. Uh, of course, the Patreon link where you can donate to me if you want to see more stuff going in for review and you want these reviews to come out more often, then that's where you can support me. Um, you can, of course, like the video if you like it, subscribe if you want to see more. If you have any questions or any suggestions, please do feel free to comment on the videos. I'll do my best to respond to them. Uh, but otherwise, yeah, thank you for watching. Uh, and I hope to see you in the next video. This is Lumerion, signing off.